Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. In today's video guys, we'll show you how to uh, put a new valve cover gasket on BMW E46. If you have a, a 6 cylinder, uh, 325, 328, 330 guys, stay with us, we'll cover that. We have that 330 CI right here. We have quite a few videos and we'll have more than 150 videos. Feel free to subscribe. This is the valve cover gasket. Okay, that's what we're using right here. Victor Ryan, it's really good stuff. Nothing sponsored here, it's purchased by us, but we use them in the past and it comes with everything that you need with the little O-rings as well and the spark plugs, uh, yeah, the spark plugs uh, uh, gasket here as well. So stay with us, let's go ahead and start on it now. Alright guys, first we need to open the hood, okay? And you can see that straight six cylinder right there. So let's go ahead and start on it now. Alright guys, we are going to support our hood because the struts are down, the shocks and it doesn't hold it. So we'll just uh, uh, make sure we support it so it doesn't fall on us. We'll have a video how to fix that as well. Okay guys, first we are going to remove okay, the air filter right here. That's the cabin air filter guys. So we have three things that you need to twist and you just pull it out. Okay, now we have to pull the filter itself. Okay. You can see, oh my goodness, check out all the leaves. We haven't cleaned our lately. Definitely have to address that issue next time. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we have, okay, you can see four bolts right there that we need to remove with the Torx bit. Okay, Torx 30 right here now. And we're going to go ahead and remove, okay, the bolts. Okay, I think we have only four. Okay, perfect. Now we have to disconnect the wires. Okay, the ones right here. Okay, so let's figure out how that was now. Okay guys, so those you have two clips now. Okay, you just pull right here. Okay, there is a clip. And you pull. Okay, that's the clip right here. So you just pull this way and up. Okay, now we have to disconnect all the seals there. Okay, so we can pull, okay, the cabin air filter box out of the way. We're going to clean ours before we install everything back together. Okay, next you can see how much room we have. Now we have to remove that cover right here. Okay, and one more cover there. We have to get a small screwdriver now. Okay, that's our set that we use here. We just uh, need to get a small, okay, uh, flathead screwdriver. You're supposed to have two caps here. We have only one. Okay, one of them is missing there. And two caps on the, va on the, on the cover for the spark plugs there, but you can see the back one there missing as well. Okay, so now those are, uh, here we have two bolts with 10 millimeter socket. Okay, we're going to remove those. They're pretty short bolts. And you can see on top, you, you don't see them, any leaks, but right there on the side where the exhaust is, that's where it drips and it smells terrible. Okay, and we have quite a bit of a oil leak from the valve cover gasket. Those are nuts. You should have two nuts there. Okay, like that again. Okay, two bolts here, two nuts on the... Okay, this cover is for the fuel injectors right here. Okay, perfect. Now this one comes in an angle, okay, like that. You can just pull it out of the way. You have to remove the old cap next. Okay, and we are going to remove that cover now. Okay, put the cap back on so we don't drop anything inside the valve cover. No, okay, right here. You can see we're, doing, you're, we're making some progress now. Okay guys, next we need to disconnect the ignition coils. So what you need to do, okay, you need to open them up like that, okay, up and pull them out. Okay, some ignition coils might differ depending on what year your BMW is. The one with the facelift, okay, that's how they are. Uh, but other than that, uh, not much difference, so... Don't, don't, don't get scared there, okay? If you have any suggestions, please let us know, guys. We will learn from one another, okay? We're going to pull all six of them out. And next, uh, what we have, we need to get an 8mm socket. And we have two nuts, okay? 
Uh, that hold the ground wires for the ignition coils. Okay, those usually are not very tight. Okay, one is out. And we have one more right there. So you guys, we're coming very close to the moment of the truth. Okay, next we need to remove all those wires out of the way. And you see how easy that thing is now. He has a few clips holding, okay. If you get a flathead screwdriver, okay, you can see one is right there. We just pry it a little bit and one towards the back. You open the clip and you pull the wiring harness out. Okay, we call it again right here. Okay, perfect. Just like that. Okay, next, uh, if you get a 19mm, you can disconnect the uh, positive cable right here. But now, very important thing, we need to disconnect the battery first. And this is because if you touch it somewhere on the body, you're going to burn your computer most likely. So, what we're going to do, we'll go to the trunk and disconnect our battery now. Okay, and you're going to disconnect the negative first. Always disconnect negative cable first. That way, if you touch the positive later on the body somewhere, you're not going to have ground and fry electric components. Okay, right here, we're ready to disconnect the positive as well. Next, finally, we can go ahead and remove that positive cable out of the way. Okay, not to worry that you're going to fry anything. Okay, right there. And check it out, all the wiring harness is on the side. Okay right, guys, so now uh, we need to disconnect that uh, breather hose right here. You press on the bottom and top and pull it out. Very careful not to crack it, okay? Because it's uh, really complicated to replace it. Next we need to disconnect the wires for the oxygen sensor right here. Because they're holding on the valve cover gasket, you just pull them out, okay, out of the way. Okay, we are ready to remove them now, guys. Uh, 10 millimeter socket, okay, and we're going to remove all the valve cover bolts now. Okay, and you can see this one is uh, actually pretty, pretty tight. Or we need to charge our battery, one of the two. Okay, uh, never ever use impact to get them tight or anything like that. We're going to I have certain torque specs. Okay, and ours will be according to the Bentley manual. Okay, let's get those loose. Okay, you can do the ones in the middle that are uh, the one holding the ground wires. You can see there for the ignition coils. This uh, seems to be original gasket. I don't think it's ever been replaced. Okay, you can see there is one more inside there. Towards the very last ignition coil. Okay, now we have two in the corners that are a little bit hard to reach. Okay, you can see them right there. So we'll get those as well. And the one in that corner. This is by the AC line, so it's a little bit inconvenient. Okay, we are going to get the impact and continue removing them. <coughs> it's important, okay, not to lose the bolts. Okay, we have the rings, uh, those gasket, gasket uh, bushings, we have those. With the new with the new valve cover gasket. Okay, you can see you can just pull them out like that. It's very important not to drop anything in the valve cover when we remove it, guys. So uh, to minimize that, we're going to remove all the bushings as well because you don't want something to drop in the timing chain. Okay, this one is out as well. Okay, you can see how they come. Now we have the ones right here. And there is a specific order that they need to be installed in as well.
Those are a little bit trickier there because it has a little bit less room due to the secondary air pump and if you have problem with the secondary air pump we have a video how to take those things apart and clean them and make them good again make them run we demonstrated on BMW in 90 we have it on the channel guys on how to repair guys channel okay not much left now and we'll see how stuck it is because sometimes they tend to be really really stuck We are trying to show everything guys, um, the video might be a little bit longer but you know what to expect because other people usually shoot a video and they skip a step, something that gets stuck. We try to video everything even if we screw up something so you know how to avoid that. Nobody's perfect but sometimes we make mistakes. And we warn you so you don't damage your vehicle in the process. Okay, those are the ones that are hard to get in the corner there. Okay, you preferably guys use gloves because that oil will get on your fingers. Uh, and first it's not good for you, second it makes your fingers oily and you cannot grab the bolts good. Okay, that last one is a little bit, a little bit tricky there. Now when you remove, you have to be careful with the breather hose, okay, right here. Because it tends to go back on the valve cover gasket, so you want to make sure that you don't break it. Okay, this one here. Now we have to remove all of them in the middle, we got them loose. Uh, you can see the ones in the middle are a little bit different shaped, so you know about that okay i think we have only two more to go let's check it out see if we have the seals here if you can remove those it's okay sometimes you won't be able to sometimes they'll be like plastic instead of being rubber from all the heat they will turn into really hard rubber, almost plastic. They will even tend to crack, that's why you start developing uh, valve cover leaks as well. Okay, and this one there is out of the way now. Okay, careful with our hose now. Okay, you have to pull it on the side a little bit like that. And it will be stuck, I'm telling you that thing will be stuck. So, you either start it on one side, but very careful not to crack it. You can uh, barely pry with a screwdriver. But you have to be careful not to crack it. If you grab it with two hands, shake it a little bit. Okay, you'll be able to pull it out. You have the wires in the back. You can disconnect those. Okay, that's the oxygen sensor there. It's disconnectable if you need to. Okay, and this is the valve cover right here, guys. Okay, guys, you can see the valve cover is out of the way now. Let me show you where our leak was, a little bit right here. Then you can see way more on the back. So that's the catalytic converter there. Every time it drips, it starts smelling like oil, terrible. Okay, so you can see that was, uh, that was our problem right here. Engine with 190,000 miles, 91,000 miles, and looks pretty good. We're going to wipe everything good, you, may, you gotta make sure that uh, where the valve cover lays on, you don't have any oil, so the new, uh, the new gasket can seal really good. Alright guys, check out now the uh, gasket there for the spark plugs, this one is almost like plastic, that's unbelievable how hard it is compared to the new one, okay? 
So you gotta make sure you pull them out good. Sometimes they will break in pieces depending how bad yours is. Okay, and always have to make sure that you don't uh, damage the grooves and the valve cover itself because valve cover could be quite costly. Okay, this one is out now. Now let's go ahead and remove the valve cover gasket as well. So you just start it on one side usually. Okay, and you start pulling it out. Again, if it's like plastic, it might break somewhere and come out in pieces, but that's fine. Okay, we're making some progress here. Okay, that's the old one guys, out of the way now. Okay guys, and now it will be important to get some uh, silicone for valve cover gasket. You need to apply only two little dots. Okay, one will be right here and one will be over here. And this is uh, because you can see that uh, uh, that uh, timing chain cover right here that contacts the cylinder head. There is a little bit of gap. And if you don't apply a little bit of silicone, you're going to develop a little bit of leak there. Okay guys, we are ready to get the new valve cover now valve cover gasket and uh, you have all the bushings as well we will install new bushings okay and you need to make sure that you get it uh, right away you can see how soft it is compared to the other one it's all over the place and that's how it should be okay because otherwise something's definitely definitely wrong okay you cannot get that thing wrong it goes only one one way the way the valve cover is shaped okay you just need to make sure that you press it in all the way it goes in the groove because otherwise it might fold and develop a leak okay almost almost all the way in now Okay, just finishing this side now, right here. Perfect, now go around and just press it all the way in. Okay, we have to install the uh, spark plug gaskets as well. Again, you have to make sure you, that uh, you get them right. You can see how ours, is, ours are. And uh, again, very, very soft rubber, nothing compared to the old ones okay and this one here as well do not install the bushings we will need to place the valve cover gasket first before we uh, install the bushings but now we are going to install two dots of silicone okay black uh, gasket gasket maker silicone or they have a uh, gray ones as well depending on uh, which one you need Okay, ready to install a little bit. You can see right there where the valve, uh, the, the timing cover actually meets the cylinder head. If you don't do that, you you know there's a small leak there and it's really annoying. Okay, check again guys for oil. Uh, you gotta make sure that everything's bone dry before you install the valve cover. Okay, we're almost, almost ready. Uh, right there again, the spark works. Just wipe everything, make sure you don't drop anything inside the engine because that could be the end of it. Okay, we are ready to get our valve cover gasket. Okay, you can see ours got some leaks now on it, dirty oil, but we're going to wash it once we put everything together. Okay, right here on the front you have two grooves that go in a canal, okay? So you gotta make sure that everything is lining up really, really good there. Okay, right here you have two grooves, so you have to make sure that everything is good. Okay, perfect. Okay guys, so this is the future mechanic right here, are you excited about it? Okay, yeah, she's excited about it. Yeah. So she's the future mechanic here on the Beamer. She has her own channel guys, check it out, says his channel, it's uh, recommended on the side, you can see it, thank you. 
Alright guys, so now we need to get the little bushings. You need to install them on the bolts actually, okay, like that. That's the easiest way to go. Because if you install them on the valve cover, some people do, they might not line up good and you damage them. So you always have to install them, okay, on the bolts. Just go ahead and do that to all of them. I don't want to waste your time watching us putting 20 of those or so. Okay, and you have to make sure that you have the washer and then the rubber bushing. Okay, just like that, washer and then rubber bushing. Okay, this is the last one right there now. Okay, so it's time to install the new one on it. You can see the old one, how flat they are. The new ones are really nice. Okay, and what you guys need to do, you need to make sure that the, you remember the center ones are a little bit different than the outside ones. Okay, so all four here now. Okay, we're going to uh, install them. And next we'll just go ahead and do the outside ones. Okay, let me turn the light on. And don't get them tied. It's very important not to get them tied. You can just start them a little bit so they don't fall. Okay, but uh, don't get them tied yet. We need to go in a specific order and specific torque, torque specs. Okay, so we'll just install all of them now. Okay, so now we'll just uh, get them barely, barely tied when they start getting tied. Okay, so we don't have to do all that turning with the torque wrench. Okay, and you start from the, from the middle and you go towards the outside, but now it's not as important as getting them tied with the torque wrench. So we'll just do the inside now and then we're going to go to the outside in a cross pattern. And it's very important to use the torque specs because otherwise you can you can break those things and then you're in big trouble. Okay, we have the links guys for the tools in the description of the video that we use if you need to get something that way you can. So we save you some time, you don't waste your time. And the parts as well will be listed below. Okay, now we go on this side a little bit. A little bit hard to get you on this side because of the emissions there, the secondary air pump. Okay, the one now on top. Okay, the one there on the bottom in the corner now. Top one. Okay, now we have those here. And the one in the middle, and we'll be ready to get the top crunch now. Alright guys, so now according to the Bentley manual, we have to use 10 Newton meters, okay, to get them tied. Or 88.5, okay, that's converter here, 88.5 inch, inch pound Fox. Okay, we have our little thing right here, you can see it's inch per pound and we have it set at 88.5, uh, 88 really convenient little small torque wrench, we have the big one too, but that one for small jobs, it's amazing, it's very precise and very inexpensive. Okay guys, we're ready to start, we'll start with the middle ones, okay, check out now when we start getting them tight, the wrench will indicate that it's ready, okay, right there. Usually we start with the middle ones, okay, right there, and then we do a cross pattern, starting from the middle, going to the outside. Okay, perfect. 
no matter how many we've done the, of those I always like using the torque wrench because otherwise you might still have a leak if you don't get them too tight if you get them way too tight you might break a bolt and then that's a bad thing okay this one's ready too Perfect, now we will start in the middle. You can see all those bushings are now compressing. Okay, the top, the bottom one there. Okay, perfect. Okay, you can see how we do the cross pattern now. Okay, now we have to remove the extension there. It takes a little bit of time, but you gotta make sure you do it right, otherwise you have a leak again and you'll be doing the same job over and over again. So better get it right the first time. Okay, perfect. Okay, now we're gonna do towards the back in the corner there. And uh, stay with us to see what else you need to do one more time. Because otherwise you might have a leak. Okay, now we need to do a little bit more on this side. And we just dropped our socket. Okay, we'll be hunting for our socket in a little bit. Okay, since we dropped it. Okay, so we need to do the one in the back now, in the corner. And we'll come back uh, again and uh, we'll do something else. We need to do one more round on each of them because the first ones that you got tied, they were there is a possibility that they got loose, okay. So we'll have to go again on them, you see. Okay, let's get this one there now. Okay, almost, you have a limited room there. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to do one more round on all of them. Okay, you gotta make sure you check them. Okay, perfect. Because the first ones that you did might get loose. Okay, so you want to go ahead and check each one of them individually now to make sure that everything is good. And uh, it's not such a uh, big difference how you go the second time, if it's a cross pattern or not. You just need to make sure you check all of them. Okay, for that click again. Okay, right there. Okay guys, you gotta make sure that you install the wires, okay, there in the clips. Because otherwise they will get on the exhaust and you might melt them. Okay, now we can get uh, our bunch of wires here. We're going to install the positive cable here. Okay, that's a plus cable. Uh, we still have our battery disconnected, remember. Uh, we'll connect it once we're done with the job okay so we're we're almost almost there guys not much left okay this one got it tight gotta make sure that you get it tight okay now uh, it's important to install your wires the right way now 
they go in the clips there and we will need to uh, install okay the ground wires with the two little uh, little nuts there okay that's very important otherwise your car might not run right okay perfect getting those tight now it's just an eight millimeter socket okay and the second one now next uh, what we're going to do we'll push all the ignition coils in and you just you have to push them all the way in otherwise uh, they might not work okay so you hear that click okay and get the wires snap them like that do that for the for the rest of them okay you can see four more to go just the same procedure okay push them again give them that extra push to make sure that they're all the way in one of ours wasn't okay and just two more now Okay guys, and next thing all you have to do is just install the ca uh, uh, the cover there okay for the spark plugs for the ignition code the injectors put the cabin filler and that's it guys there there is no need to waste your time watching the rest of it uh, don't forget to connect your battery and thank you for watching guys hopefully the video saved you some bucks see you guys next time